this is my camera. Um, it's a Sony A7S III, and I've got a Sigma 24 to 70 on it. Um, pretty much what that means is um, for the lens, um, focal length of the lens, which is basically like how far you can zoom in, is measured in millimeters. Um, so 24 millimeters is like pretty pretty zoomed out. Um, if you go like past that, I know a lot of people have like 10 and 12 millimeters and that's how you get like that fisheye thing that you see a lot and like Indian and punk photographers do and it's really cool. Um, and then as you zoom in more, you get to where um, you're into like 70, well mine only goes to 70 millimeters, but that's that's pretty zoomed in. Um, but you can get up to like 400, like if you're an athletic photographer, they'll have like 400 millimeter zoom lenses and those are crazy that's like you could see an ant from like a water tower crazy probably not but it's close um so if you if you want to get into cameras i'm just going to really quick go over the parts um my photographers will definitely probably already know this but bear with me um the basics are always fun and my favorite so if you're taking a picture in full manual mode, there's three things you need to be aware of. There's the aperture, there's the shutter speed, and then there's this thing called ISO, um, which is kind of weird, but essentially ISO is how well the camera will do in dark scenes. So like the higher the ISO, the more light it's going to have digitally in the body. Um, but the trade-off to that is it'll be what we call noisier so it'll have more grain but not in the good way it'll lose detail really quickly um, at higher ISOs um, newer cameras like this thing can get up to like a hundred thousand ISO which is crazy but you start losing detail really definitively um, on like Canon and Nikon and Fuji cameras after 6400 um, this one is cool and I start losing like a lot of data around 8,000. Um, but I don't like to go that high anyway, cause I like my photos to be really crisp. Um, and then shutter speed is kind of hard to explain, but that's essentially how fast the camera's shutter flashes. So if you shoot at, let's just do this. I shot this one at a fast shutter speed. So it was probably, one three hundredth of a second um, is this picture. You can tell it's fast because there's really not a lot of motion blur at all, um, which motion blur can be a cool thing. But if you want to take a picture of someone hitting a drum kit or like strumming a guitar, you probably need a faster shutter speed. Otherwise, it's just going to kind of look crazy and blurry and, and not good. Um, you can tell it's really fast too because this dude's tongue is still sticking out. Um <laughs> <laughs> Noah Thompson. <laughs> Love that dude. Um, cool. And then here's an example of a show a slow shutter speed. I th think I shot this at, um, I want to say it was like one fifth of a second or one fourth of a second or something like that. Um, but I also wanted to do this like really distorted grainy thing um, where it kind of just captured the movement of the moment. And that's a good way to do that. Um, but yeah, and the the other part, the third part is the aperture or f-stop, um, and that is kind of the most finicky out of everything. Um, so like, if you talk about, if you're ever talking with a photographer and they're talking about like, for instance, this lens is uh, 24 to 70, 1.8. It's like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> like, it means well it can go from 24 millimeters to 70 millimeters. That's the focal length. And then 1.8 is the maximum um, aperture that it can shoot at. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is a low f-stop or low aperture. Um, you can tell mainly because see how this subject is. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you can tell this is this is shot at a low aperture because the subject is in focus completely. 
and then everything else starts blurring right here, like right next to it. And that's probably like a foot and a half difference right there. I shot this at 1.8. Um, and then it gets really blurry like back here. Um, like even this dude's like kind of clear. This dude right here is super blurry. That's probably like a 10 foot difference right there. Um, so a lower f-stop is equal to a shallower depth of field is what that's called. Um, depth of field is, is essentially like how trying to figure out how to explain this, how far back the subject looks compared to the background. Um, so like you can tell this was shot in an arena. So you can tell like the seats up here way far back. Um, and you can tell because they look super blurry and you can barely even make out that they're seats and not just some random shadow or something like that. Um, but this is super crisp. Now, if this was shot at a very high f-stop like f22 for example um i think this was shot at f18 um this is probably a six or eight foot difference um and then the subject is still in focus oh my god i did it again <laughs> subject is still in focus um but the background is also in focus you just can't read that because it's so small uh but this is crisp even the railing which is this is probably 10 or 15 feet um is in focus but once you get out here which is hundreds maybe even a couple thousand feet away it's it's super blurry um, but it took that much to get there a lot of times if you're shooting like landscape stuff you want to have like the highest f-stop possible um but for musicians if you're shooting like yourself um, with a camera, you want to have it around, I'd say 2.8 to like 4.5 um, because then your background is nice and blurry, but they can see you and the guitar because sometimes if you get too small with it, I have this problem a lot. Um, you'll like the tip of their nose will be in focus, but everything else is blurry. Like even their eyes or like their mouth and that sucks and it can ruin a good photo. Um, there's also a couple different effects of zooming in and out. So like if you have, um, a zoom lens, like this is, this goes up to 70 millimeters, but if you have like the 400 millimeter ones, there's this thing that happens in the lens called depth compression. Um, so in order to make the subject stand out at low apertures, um, kind of what happens is the lens warps the background a little bit to make it seem closer than it really is, but blur it to make, make it look farther. It's this weird, like double phenomenon kind of thing. Um, and you can kind of tell here, um, it, it's really hard to tell in actual photos when you're looking at it. It's more of like a oh, I saw this in real life taking this photo, then like, oh, this looks like it's really compressed. Um, but like this is a massive train. Um, and because of the perspective and the depth of compression, it looks like it, this dude's like 6'1". So it, look, <laughs> it looks almost 6'1". Um, but in reality, it was probably coming like at that height. Um yeah, so that's all the technical jargon. <laughs>